the what is the system system programming? System programming is the the uh, program using what the system API. So it's not application program the interface. It's the system library system interface. Each operating system provide the around the 200 the library. There are three different types of the category of the such a system interface, system library, system core, whatever the name is. So one is the the Win Windows, the Win32 API. There is a the, as you know, it's uh, basically for the Windows-based operating system. The second part is the most popular one. It's a POS6 API. The POS6 is the, the Unix system. It's a Berkeley the branch, Berkeley family. There is another branch, SVR system R. The <coughs> SVR for the uh, Unix the branch. So we will see the, such a uh, the very brief family tree of the Linux and the Unix system later. Actually, it's not that simple. It's a very, very long, the history of the, I will show you what I'm talking about the later, okay? The third one is uh, the interesting part, is the uh, Java API. Java API, you have known, it is the Java program API, but some, if we consider the definition of operating system as the something in between interface, uh, the user and hardware, the, it can be used, considered as the such a operating system and system library. So, <coughs> so somebody considered the Java API as the system core system API. So in this class, we are going to focus on the such a core six API. So during the uh, this semester, you are going to utilize the such as a core six API, the system library, to implement the uh, to the complete your the project zero, project one, and project two. We will introduce GA and we will introduce the details of what you are going to do uh, in your the project. Then the after we have we are ready to develop the operating system, first thing is we need to design the uh, what is the architecture of the operating system. Even though we can mainly consider the Unix part or the Windows based operating system, anyway each one has uh, their own characteristic. Uh, that characteristic can be designed the first time the, when we design the operating system architecture. There are two main goals, the user part, the system part. That's true because the operating system is in between the user and the hardware. So we can consider the first part, the uh, system core, how to optimize the system, how to maximize the the. Uh, how to maximize the utilization of the operating the hardware resource. Because uh, we have very limited uh, hardware resource, so we need to coordinate and we need to control such a the, uh, limited system resources. Such that is a system core. However, eventually that operating system will be used by the user or the application or other program. The, from the user perspective, that should be easy to use. They don't care the uh, how it, the operating the operating system organized the, or the coordinate the resource. As long as it's fast and easy to use, it's okay. So, however, they are usually trade off. For example, if you consider too much user goal, like the when Windows developed the user graphical user interface, Windows 33.1, long time ago. They just add up the user interface level on top of their existing, their existing the operating system. That caused a serious problem in one the operating system. There's another operating system, MS DOS. So, so if we consider only one part of the uh, board, the, it will be sometimes later. You just uh, need to uh, the change everything. So when you design, it's not only for the. Uh, major operating system when you design the uh, embedded operating system or the small the operating system through the hardware you can actually uh, consider sometimes you can focus on the system part or sometimes uh, you can focus on the more in the user goals so that is that also or not, mostly nowadays when you design the operating system we adapt the idea of the object oriented software engineering so what is the um, object, main object, object. So module by module, we will see later, the, this, nowadays the module by module, the, then eventually by combining several modules, we can 
the builder kernel and the operating system. That is the uh, typical way nowadays to do that. Uh, instead of by applying, so directly any the new idea or the new algorithm. So for example, somebody proposed a very fast CPU, the scheduling algorithm, very nice and uh, uh, the better than any other. However, even though we have the uh, the almost perfect the CPU scheduling algorithm, we cannot directly apply to the operating system. First, we need to decide what is the what will be done. So it's a policy. So first, decide the policy because the each the every operating system has a different uh, the characteristic. Not only general purpose, sometimes the, my operating system is for the real-time processing. But this is real-time in computer science, by the way. Real-time is fast. Mostly in general it's fast, but not always fast. So is there any the computer, is it possible to build a Really, 100% real time. Real time means it's the same time almost. When I the, the execute any program, it's right away the response. Actually, it's not. It's an idea. Anyway, there's a certain delay. Even though that is the, the nanosecond, there should be the delay time. So when we are saying the real time, generally it's not fastest the uh, processing. It's not fastest the operating system. Instead, it's a guaranteed, <coughs> okay, based on policy, guaranteed response time. So for example, my operating system is in charge of two main computer for the nuclear the plant system. So several years ago, there was a, a tsunami in Japan. So it attacked the nuclear plant. So if the system, Alami or Allah system working very well, we can, I'm not sure whether we, even though we know the protect, anyway, so such an Alami. So Alam, if there's a the attack or anything, so if we can build a really real time, that's the idea. But that's the ideal case. Instead, the, if you decide a policy, any system should respond within the microsecond. So point one microsecond is the maximum duration that you allow in your policy. That when you build a real-time operating system, operate that the operating system always queue the response within one microsecond. That is the the policy. That is the guaranteed time. So when you apply any operating system algorithm like a CPU scheduling, you can consider such a the guaranteed the response time. So response time, the real time is it's not the fast response time always, it's the should be guaranteed response time. Okay? At that time, so we can consider different mechanisms. So first we need to decide a policy. What is the policy of our system? Then apply the various different the algorithm, that algorithm, that approach we are going to discuss throughout the semester. Okay? Then, finally, we are ready to implement the operating system. Nowadays, the C is the most popular program language. Roughly, it's in general, roughly 70 to 80% of the operating system are coded by C or C++. Why? Because many of the System core, system library are coded by the C or C++, so it's uh, the general. Then the other, the 20 to 30 percent, especially when you deal with the device and hardware directly, at that time you can use the assembly language that you learn in your microprocessor class. So these are the engineer. Nowadays is getting the flex of a high level language are used for even for the operating system such as Perl, Python, such as shell script for the especially in the interface level. So outside the shell program level, such as the shell, shell script can be used. However, the higher level language you use is uh, easy to maintain, easy to develop. Problem is. A performance is not better than the low level language. So, so uh, you can understand. Also, 
Nowadays, the emulator, the operating system, definitely we will see later how to evaluate our operating system algorithm. So I developed this new operating system, or the, I developed the new scheduling algorithm. How can you test it? Best way, install it to the hardware and test it with the real system. Not always that is possible. Right? So nowadays we can find that many of the operating systems provide emulator or you can use the virtual machine to test the, your the operating system or the, uh, the operating system algorithm. One of the examples is the Android. Android, when you develop the Android the application, you don't have to have the, the device. Instead, you can define the emulator. You can use the emulator. It's a kind of simulator. There are various types of the operating system. So, uh, as you know, the MS DOS is a single process the operating system, the simple one, and more complex. So, Unix and the Windows system are the more complex. The nowadays, layered approach and the micro kernel are the mainstream of the current modernized operating system. Even though the the major operating systems such as the, the Mac OS. Windows, they put all together into the corner. However, they try to adapt the idea of the layered approach or the micro kernel approach to make their operating system flexible. Okay? So we will see a little bit more about the, such a, the layered approach and the micro kernel approaches. So first one is MS DOS, as I introduced before. This is the micro. Uh, of the, the DOS, so Bill Gates adopted DOS. When he developed the first uh, personal computer in his garage, he used uh, such a DOS program for as an operating system. Okay? Then it, it's, uh, it has been used until the Windows 95, because at the time the <coughs> network is uh, spread out. It's not only the computer, it's not only for the single user system. It can be used for the many applications, the multitasking and the multi-user system and the network, the connected. So finally, the Microsoft uh, gave, gave up the MS-DOS, but the recently they put the command line interface back because uh, the for management issue, administrative the perspective, the command line interface is the uh, faster and uh, convenient way. Okay. I learned the uh, computer system first time with uh, those commands, like the copy and the delete and move and read and so on. So I still remember. It's the 1982. It was a long time. I don't know why I took that course there. After that, it was, I was the I think the sixth grade in elementary school, in the, my the elementary school, it's, it's a education, it's a K, to, K through 12, it's the same thing in the United States, but it's a six year, three year, and three year. So the last year of elementary school, I learned those programs first time. It was uh, it's amazing, so 30, almost 40 years ago, 35 years ago, I learned those first time. And probably because of that, I'm here. Okay, so the Unix is getting more complicated. So also the, we are going to use the, some part of the, the Unix operating system using the Linux system for interface and several commands provided by the Unix, okay? This is a very brief history of the Unix history. It started from the 1969. Actually, the most of the systems start their clock from the 1970s. Because of that, if you lose the, the, in, the included, the, each computer has the small battery to keep the, even though you lose the power, they try to keep the minimum, the information like the date and time, but even though you lose the, such a thing, it will be reset as the 1970, because the Unix has been released the 1970 for public first time, but the, it was developed as the name of the Unix in 1969. So 1969, there are a lot of things happen. So Neil Armstrong, the first step on the moon, right? It's a July something, I think, the 1969. Also, do you remember? Is there anyone who took my course before? No? What happened? Another thing happened, very important thing, in 1969. 
C++, more important. Professor Lee was born. <laughs> <laughs> and also, relational database model was proposed the first time by the Dr. E.F. Code, 1969, from IBM T.J. Watson Center. IBM T.J. Watson Research Center is uh, 40 <coughs> minute, 50 minute driving distance. It's a white plane. So there, IBM, the research center, is named after the T.J. Watson, so one of the uh, most uh, the famous the, uh, researcher in the IBM. He uh, is a T.J. Watson. That at the T.J. Watson, the Dr. E.F. Code, the proposed uh, uh, paper for the relational database model, 1969, and the release to the public as a journal, the 1970 person. So. This is a Unix family, so we have the two main branch of the Unix. One is a BSD, it's a B stands for the Berkeley. So it's a Berkeley uh, system deployment. So after that, the Sun OS also follow. The, this Sun OS, the uh, Solaris 2. Point something, is the same as the Sun OS 5. The, the most popular, the Sun Microsystem. Nowadays, Sun Microsystem is part of the Oracle. Then because of that, Oracle is fighting with the Google. So Sun, actually some microsystem, support the open source the program Java at the time. So it's uh, actually the Java is owned by the Sun. Then after Oracle the merge the Sun, then they have the, the, the intellectual property, right? Then the, I think the, it will be decided near soon, on May. But uh, probably, I think the Sun will be the win the game. But always such a lawsuit in the uh, IT or the computer area, there's no clear winner or whatever. Instead, they try to delay and delay the, their progress. During that time, the, the Sun will do something because uh, Google cannot uh, invest or cannot uh, put effort more on the Android part. Because it's uh, the, they are fighting each other. Then, that time probably it will be settled by paying the money. Okay, but the, during that time, the worker would like to do something more. That is uh, usually what uh, they are doing during the lawsuit. So anyway, so system the uh, version R five point seven is another the branch of the Linux. So AIX follow this one, but you can see that nowadays the BSD more is used a lot in Linux systems. Okay? Basically, the, if we take a look at the uh, family tree of the uh, Unix, so it is the Linux and the Unix are not that much different in terms of the equation. So that looks like a simple, but this is uh, amazing. The family, Unix a family tree. Can you hear the Xiang Xiang? Or the, this one? It's a from the 1972. Actually, I give up to update. Come in. It's a from the 1969, right? Yeah. It's a starter from the 1969 Unix. Then I gave us to update the disk. This is a Unix and Linux family tree. It has been developed. It's not that simple. It has been developed in various, starting from the one, the ancestor. So I gave up the several years ago to update. It's more complicated. It includes the iOS, it includes the Android, it includes the, the, the Mac OS more and more. So it will be, which means there are opportunities for you guys to do something. It's not only the application developer or the software engineer. It's not the only job you can expect after graduation. There are a lot of opportunities for system programming and uh, such an operating system. If you know, if you are interested in the, uh, do you want to memorize? <laughs> so this is the justice for all of the family don't have to try to memorize just to pull your butt. You can find such a history from the, this website. Okay? So keep updating. Imagine me, the, this guy, keep updating, updating the old, uh, different version of the Unix system. Okay? 
So this is the, the uh, Unix system architecture uh, based thank you. And uh, as we have defined the uh, operating system, the kernel is the in between the hardware and the system core. System core, somebody consider system core as the part of the operating system, but here the, if we can define the kernel, okay, as the in between everything, so this is the, uh, the Unix system kernel. But somebody define all of these other uh, operating systems, sometimes the only kernel is the operating system. That's not very important, but uh, you can understand the Unix system has a kernel that covers the, this part. We are going to uh, mainly focus on the not all of this algorithm, but the most of the algorithm, the or component of the, the kernel and operating system. In addition to that, we will practice operating system using the system code. That is the overall the what we are doing in the this class. There are, as I introduced, two approaches nowadays. The traditional approach is to put all the component, all the algorithm, everything in the kernel. Okay? It's uh, uh, like the Linux system, Unix system, Windows system, major operating system, they try to uh, build the operating system as the kernel. So kernel includes everything. However, nowadays, the problem, if you want to change something, you need to rebuild the entire kernel. Okay? If you port your kernel to the another hardware system, you need to change everything. So, in other words, it's not very flexible. So, it's not easy to develop and develop the new way of... So, they consider the uh, new approach. One is the layered approach. Layered approach starting from the minimal, minimal part of the operating system. So, mostly the layer one will be device program to the handle, the hardware. Then, based on that one, outside, so on top of this, there's another layer of the component operating system that can utilize the such a device like the system core from here to not all this one. So for example, the I.O. system or the system part and the memory management part, the page replacements, you can put such a deep outside layer. And the base on top of that, there is another layer and layer finally, the most outside layer will be user interface. Okay? So, Benefit, if you change something, the layer 2, you don't have to touch anything. Layer 1 only, layer 2. Then even you don't have to, to change anything outside the layer. However, because of this one, the problem, you need to communicate. Communicate, okay? The layer by layer, this is the overhead, it takes some time. Also, you need to synchronize the interface between the layer. So that is one of the approach nowadays. Another approach is the micro kernel system. It's a similar as the layer the approach, so but minimal. Idea is a minimal kernel, minimal operating system. So do not put the file system. Do not put the user interface. Do not. So only minimal part of the kernel, so that is called Micro corner. So micro corner is in short is called the Mahu. So the micro corner. So for example, the Mac OS is the example of the such a micro corner. The Darwin is on the micro corner. They try to minimize instead. So for example, the Mac OS. So this is a minimal part that it can adapt other benefit of the the Unix system like the BSD can be adapted. The employee to the this one because it's a minimal that can handle the I/O and the, the hardware. Then on using the this one, the micro corner, we can adapt the benefit of other. Also, you don't have to redevelop the all the component. Okay, it's then they try to communicate each other. So this is the idea of the micro corner. So so I that's the reason I didn't the define operating system as a kernel itself. So nowadays, the kernel can be the everything, or the kernel can be the only the minimal part of the, system, the operating system. Okay? So, which means 
you can for your exercise lab, the, you can the use the if you are using the MacBook, so you can use the Mac OS so for your practice of the Unix and the command line interface. Okay. And it is true nowadays it's kind of a hybrid system. So Linux and the basically Linux and Unix, the Windows system are the uh, monolithic. So which means to put everything in together. So all the package are the operating system, and that can be considered as a, a kernel. But not only just the one, the big system, they try to the make the interface to adapt to other or benefit of the operating system. It's called the hybrid. The system. So macOS is actually the basically the hybrid system that combines the micro kernel and uh, the other operating system as a layer, like the, this one. So Aqua is the, there, the user interface, and uh, it, this is the API level, uh, like the Object C and the Java, Cocoa, and uh, QuickTime. So this is the uh, macOS the operating system structure. In terms of architecture, I like the Mac OS, but the, I'm not a big fan of the MacBook or the one of the. I have the two MacBooks actually, but I never used. <laughs> so sometimes, whenever I have a certain project, so if the project go by the MacBook or the. So I select the MacBook because I'm using Windows, the uh, Windows based the tablet or the laptop. But uh, I, it's hard to change in my the preference. So I don't like the the this the surface, but it's very hard to change it, the preference. Nowadays, mobile device is getting the highlighted. So what is the main difference? And uh, this one and this one. In terms of operating system, basically it's the same. Okay, it has a hardware, it has an operating system, it has a user interface. The main p difference is, what is the main problem of the, your cell phone? When I visited uh, last uh, winter, I visited uh, China. So whenever I take the public transportation or the going the public place, even the, the university, many of the students use another big one. It's a bag of the battery. So using that is much bigger than this. So some of you guys are using the backup device. If you or the battery is uh, are run out of, it doesn't last long, then the, this one, I can replace the battery, but nowadays many of the uh, circuit, you cannot uh, replace the battery. So backup device. Power is the most important part. So how to, one way we can develop the new the battery that lasts longer and longer, then you don't have to be here. Okay. On other ways, in terms of the algorithm, we can minimize the computation. Also, instead of the multitasking, we can keep the only the one current copy of the program, something like that, in the user interface level. So that is the main different thing. So in the mobile device, the operating system, so basically there are two types of the, there were many, but nowadays mostly two. Okay, BlackBerry, is there anyone who are using BlackBerry? Or Symbian, I told to search out the uh, old the mobile operating system, but nowadays not many. Almost I cannot see last few years I cannot see any other the mobile the operating system, mobile device operating mm -hmm. system except the iOS and the Android. Basically, iOS interestingly, iOS and Android are the same architecture almost. It has a, they have the core operating system. This core operating system from the Mac and the BSD. However, it cannot be comparable, which means your application on MacBook cannot be used in the, uh, you need to uh, recompile, then the uh, download. So even though they are sharing the same the core operating system, your application is not comparable in iOS. Okay? Then they have the layered approach, and so as you can see, it's a developed level, and the media service uh, focus on the something graphics, audio, and the video stuff, and streaming, because the multimedia data contents are the most important part of the such a mobile device. That's my main research area. Okay. Uh, later, when we have a time, I will introduce that. The core service, uh, like the cloud computing and database part, uh, so are included in this level. On the other hand, when we see the Android, Android is 
very similar architecture as the iOS, and but the, this is open source. Actually, Android is the name of the company before that the Google purchased it. Unfortunately, that Android used a lot of the open source, it's the Java, and so Java is the, the copyright, the intellectual property of the, the Oracle now. So because of that, they are fighting each other. Probably, in my personal opinion, the Google will pay a lot of money. They like to settle uh, the, the case. I, I think the Google already paid the money, right? No? Why don't you read the article? Oh, so, so, um, so they are based on the Linux kernel, but uh, they modified it. Okay? And uh, basically, the, uh, this one used uh, uh, the object C, but uh, this one used uh, Java with the Eclipse. Right? Is there any the course this semester for Android development? Yes? So, what about the iOS? They cover the iOS also? No, only this one? I think that is because of basically this is open source, this is a closed one. So, but it's worthwhile to learn. Okay. And they provide a lot of the core services, such as the SQLite is included, that's the relational database. The, the base that is right weighted, the database is also included. They have the browser and the multimedia and so on, like the, this one, but basically it's the same the layer as the iOS. Working. I'm going to read the, this part. Then, finally, we are ready to, uh, I'm thinking, the, if the, this exercise lab is going on, the, maybe next year, I'd like to include the uh, regeneration of the corner, then by adding the, the, our the algorithm, like the project one and project two, then, but unfortunately, I'm not ready to uh, regenerate the kernel using our virtual machine. I tried uh, several times, but uh, the but Debian virtual machine is not working well. So each operating system provides the package one software to regenerate the, your, the kernel operating system. It's mostly the kernel part. So kernel, what is a kernel? It's a software also. So as long as you can compile, they provide a special package, like the Debian has the Kernel package, the, it's the name of a package, it's the name of the software to rebuild your kernel. Rebuild means compile, that's it. Okay? So if you are interested, you can try the most of the Unix and Linux system. We are using the especially Ubuntu or the other the Linux system. It's a very easy to you can just try. Before that, if you have the very so you can use the virtual machine if you want. Then nothing loose. So if your kernel is messed up, then the copy your virtual machine, okay? Then try. So that is the overall called the SysGen. It's the name of a program, but the name can be varied depending on the operating system, okay? Then finally, after you build the, uh, the, your kernel, this kernel will be listed decide on the, your the computer system. The, this is what I explained before. The, when you turn on your computer, what happens? So this is called the system booting. Okay? So each operator from the BIOS program that check the hardware and that has the location of the bootstrap loader, this bootstrap is in the read-only memory. So it will you will not lose the such a uh, program even though you turn off the uh, power. Then this bootstrap the loader in I think the one of the students asked the, what is a group. Group is the, the example of the bootstrap loader in Linux, the Linux system. So sometimes when you turn on the operating system, Linux system, you can see the different uh, the version of the the kernel. 2.4 something, 2.0, 2 2.1, 2 you can select that is the Bootstrap loader. Long time ago, when I used the Linux with the Windows system, I need to do the dual, boot, dual operating system. So dual booting. At that time, there is a program that's the same program as the, the group in Windows system that's called the anti loader. So from the anti loader, I can select either the Windows or the Linux system. 
So that is what have done the long time ago nowadays. So you most of you don't have to do the such a the multi dual the operating system instead you can use virtual machine. So it is the still even the nowadays the right now the many of the students use the Windows old version of Windows. For example, I do not have the the license for the Office 2013, but I have old one. So at that time you can install the Windows 2000. So with the virtual machine, then you can use. It. You don't have to re your boot. You don't have to use such a such a bootstrap loader. Then it points the kernel. Then finally your kernel will be loaded. However, the Windows has one more step. It's a two-step process. Like the, in the hard disk drive, it has the location of your operating system. That is called the master boot record (MBR). Okay. So Windows has one more step in your the hard disk drive. So that's the reason when you set up the BIOS program on your PC, IBM the comparable PC like the Windows PC generally. So you need in the BIOS program you need to decide with where is the booting the disk or the booting location. That that the location that partition has the master boot record. That boot record is a small but the four byte I think so small area small size. Then that point to your operating system. That is a two-step the process. Okay, so that's the end of the chapter two, which means we are ready to learn the uh, operating system the, from the next week. Before uh, we move to the chapter three, we'd like to have the first exercise slide. That is the uh, the Unix command. So right now it's a ten seven. It's roughly forty minutes. Okay, so uh, Xiang Xiang will be in charge of the lab. Why don't you bring your laptop? If you do not bring your laptop or auto battery, you can share with your friend. So anyway, the, today we cannot uh, do the practice uh, detail and everything is just uh, the taste of the new operating system. So if you already know what, uh, if you are familiar with, you can post it. Also, one more thing is the next class, next exercise that we will learn. Why don't you set up? Also, there are two ways to edit the file the, in this class. One is the we are going to use the VI. Anyone who are familiar with the VI? One, two, three, not many. So this the it's a good time to practice your VI. Still in the uh, if you join the any project. As long as they are using the uh, Unix or Linux based uh, operating system, so you should be familiar with the VI editor. VI is not the old fashioned, it's uh, gone, it's uh, still used a lot, and also it looks like a professional if you are able to use the VI. VI is a very, very powerful tool to edit the plain text in the file. Okay, so you will learn how to use a VI. Also, if you are not familiar with the VI, you can use the the editor provided by the Debian OS. It's a G Edit. It's a graphical user interface. It's click, click, click. But I strongly suggest to be familiar with the VI. Uh, the definitely it need your the practice after that. Even though the Shang Shang will introduce later the next class. Next exercise lab, but the, I strongly suggest to practice by yourself to get familiar with the VI. Otherwise, later the for Unix programming or Unix shell programming, sometimes it takes a time to edit your the file using the uh, editor. Also, I realized that if your VM player is not working very well, sometimes check the service. If we are using the Windows system, the service program should be running VM player service in your service. So why don't you, you can turn off and turn it on, or the, if we, you're the VM player service, also, I think the VM player authentication service is not enabled, you cannot the, use your VM player. Okay. Go ahead. So in, in a, the lab, I am using the VM layer here, and I'm using the Debian 8.1. You can choose 
open things to the light. We don't need to play using Debian okay. SB. And now I log it. And here we open the tab. How we can describe. Here is the workplace. And we can open the terminal here. So now we log in the table. And here is the files and directories of the Linux. It's similar as the Mac OS if you have been using it. It's, diff it's different with the directories of the Windows. In here is the system directory. It's the bin, it's for the binary, for the files, and the user is have some information of the user. And the others, you can you can find device, device file, the driver, and something else. And in Linux, the place is the forward, forward slash, but in Windows, we use backslash. And here is some um, comment and the Linux. The first is date. We use this comma in the terminal. That's just date. It shows date here. And you can put some options to change the format of the output for here. I just showed it. the mouse and of the hour of oh, the post. Oh, sorry. Option you can use the help to find to find to find option and the comment for here. By using help. And there is the other comment. Here is the calendar. Calendar is used for show the calendar for today, uh, for this month. You can show the other month, other year, like 2015, or you can show other months, like last year. And here is the echo. Echo is very useful. It's similar with the print or print F in Java or C. So in here we can just pick out Hello World. It's print Hello World here as you print. You show the, the space and you will end with the enter. However, if you want to print the enter, you can use the <coughs> quotation mark. But now, here is a quotation mark, and there is not. And I can print other, like, like two. So you show two lines here. You can enter the new line character. You can use the single quotation mark or double quotation mark. It's different, but I will talk about it later. And here's who is used for show the user of this 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 system 
without just me. And in case who had either to show who is the user of the current. Now it's me. And here's a little mistake. If we want to show the current working directory, you can choose PWD. You can choose the place of the current working directory. But however, it's a mistake, so you can save it. And TTY is show the panel and <coughs> Actually, it's show the page. And then the binary calculator. You use BC to enter the calculator. And now we can use 2 plus 3 to show 5. 1 multi 4 is 4. Also, you can use semicolon, like 1 plus 1. Two, you can show two answer by the same column. And you use quit. You can return. And here is clear. If you don't like it, clear. And the metal. Metal is send is help, as I say. Like BC, you tell anything about BC and options. So if you have, if you don't understand any common, you can use map and list as LS. Oh, there's. LS, you can show any file and directory in this directory. And here is some option for show the details like initial periods and the date and the user and the name and the size. C is being directory, R is being you can read, Y, W is being you can write, X is being you can excuse. And the next is PWD as I say. And you can create a new directory as NKDIR. Oh, no? Like we create a new one, like new one. Okay. So here is a new one directory, and change directory like CD. So we can use new one. So we enter the new one, and we can use CD space. Double area, we can return. And now we don't want it, so we remove as three and double three and dir to remove. So that is not not new one. And that is the cat. Cat is for uh, create a new new file. Now, as I say, cat create an a a a, and we can enter anything like that. Anything you enter will create an a a a file. As I see here. And now, if there is no gradient symbol, it's useful to show the, this file. Here's the command of the AAA. 
and the and in the U Linux the gradient symbol is changed change output. Usually is your output is the screen, but we can change to the other files. For now I change AAA to new file as BBB. And show BBB is the same as AA. So here is similar with copy. But there is another common as CP is being copied with copy AAA to CCC. So this C is the same as AAA. And here is the sort. Sort is very useful for files. You can sort the files by name, by date, by area, by, by any period. And the file and you can sort by You can sort by key, by output, by table, by table. You can change the location and the date, but it's too complex. And here is the copy. You can copy the file to another directory. And here's the move. Move is the similar with copy, but you will remove the source file. And here is the interesting use as we move AAA to DDD in the same directory. Here is DDD, but not AAA here. Because it removed the source file. So we can use move as rename. So you can remove the directory as just remove. You do not use R and D I R. And here's the WC is to count is a count of time. Oh there's no I am. So here's three lines, three word and 29 characters in the BBB. Here is the option. And page is for display the contents of the page file. Ah, uh, we don't use it. And here is um, here is the head to display the top top head lines of the of the file. And tile is similar with head, and more is shown more page. And here is grip. Grip is very useful. It is for search. It is for search. No, I grip. in BBB. It showed this line in BBB. And the grip. You can use the regular expansion expansion in the grid. So in the BBB we have B C D. So we can use grid B C in BBB. So we show B or C in here. And pipe. You can pipe is for use two comment or more. It, and the output of the this one will be the input for the second one. For here is first we show who you show the user and then you will be the input of the WC. So in this comment is used for count how many users in the system. So we can use LS so here is mean there's 20 files 
in these directories. And TI is translate. You, you can change any character to, to other character. In here, you change low, lower case to uppercase. And IO is the less than symbol and greater than symbol. Less than is used for the input, greater than is used for the output. And here, LS, you can, LS is the list, and you change output to this file. So, here we LS. TXT. And in ls.txt, here is the all files. And here is the input. So we decode. And from the ls.txt, Here is the change for input the echo. And the pipe, as I said. Here is the M of the L lab one. That is taken. So you don't have any question. No? Okay, thank you.